So friends, what was the homework given to you yesterday? 23. I'd given you to read the section. 22. 22 and 23 of the Customs Act to read. Okay. Now, section 22, this deals with abatement of duty. Abatement of duty. And 23 deals with remission of duty. duty. Remission of duty. duty. Okay. Now, the circumstances in which these provisions apply, these are different. Right? Absolutely different circumstances under which the provisions are applicable. Right? Now, we already know what is in section 14. Here we have to have a reference of section 14. Only then we will understand section 22. <clears throat> so as per section 14, the value, right, value at what time is relevant for assessment? Time and place of importation. Time and place of importation, importation or exportation. That is section 14. Right, section 14 is common for both. Of course, section 22 is only in relation to imported goods, right? But value for the purpose of assessment of duty is relevant at the time of import or export of goods. So that is section 14. This is value at the time and place of import or export, whatever be the situation. So the most crucial thing is time and place of import. Now section 22 is partially an exemption or rather exception, not exemption. Partially it is an exception to section 14. Not full. Partially. Right. Well, partially, that is already covered under section 14. And some part is an exception to section 14. Right. Now, the section relates to imported goods. Now, how long the goods are referred as imported goods? What is the meaning, exact meaning of the imported goods? Till, till the Till it is cleared for home consumption. Till the duty is not paid and order for removal is not passed. Those are imported. So section 22 is dealing with the imported goods. Right. So now you, now you can understand the meaning of that. That once the duty, etc. has been paid, then there is nothing in section 22. Right. Then there is nothing in section 22. You can apply other provisions, but not section 22. <clears throat> okay. So now I'll take you to section 22 and then we will interpret that. Now section 22 is here. What this is, where it is shown to the satisfaction of the assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner of customs. So the first question, who is authorized to exercise the powers under section 22? SCDC. Right. It is already given this. We have already seen number of sections where instead of a specific designation, the designation referred to the proper officer. So proper officer means whosoever is authorized to exercise that power at that station. But here it is clearly mentioned that power under section 22 is exercisable only by AC or DC of customs. Okay, so the first question in this section. right? Now we have three clauses 
in this right so there are three subsections and in subsection one we have three clauses now this says that the imported goods had been damaged or had deteriorated at any time before or during the unloading of the goods in india what is written damaged damaged or deteriorated how these two words are different maybe deteriorated before uh, unloading or after unloading <clears throat> damaged no, this is due to some act some act is there who has done that is not important it may be natural also but some act is involved then there is a damage right and by chance if you leave the vegetables and do do not keep in the refrigerator for 3 days what happens you rotate very sure like that So right, that is a deterioration. So deterioration is natural. So in the clause number A, both the wordings have been used. That is why I am pointing out. Right, just see this again. Here, what we are using the word? We are using the word damaged or deteriorated. Okay. Now, if you read clause B, what it says? This is that the imported clause, other than whereas goods has been damaged at any time after the unloading thereof in India, but before the examination under Section 17 or an account of accident, not due to any willful act, etc., etc. Here the word damage deterioration is missing. Here the word deterioration is missing. Okay, that makes a difference in the interpretation or application of law. Okay, and then number C that any warehouse goods had been damaged again, the word deterioration is missing from clause number C. So this word deteriorated, this becomes highlight here. So if you have a printout, please underline that. That it is only in clause A that the word deteriorated is appearing in clause B and in clause C. This word does not appear. Okay, so is the difference clear? Right. So damage and deterioration. This is, to a large extent, this is natural. Okay. now there is some act and the result of this may be damage or deterioration right and if the impact continues then what happens then the result will be destruction right destruction or you can say complete loss so section 22 will be relevant only if the possibility of further damage or deteriorations are no more there and if that continues the result is destruction or complete loss so this is covered under section 22 and this is covered under section 
section come later and <laughs> section come later 23 hmm. and if we follow this <laughs> logically these are in sequence I in sequence right first there is a damage then there can be a destruction so deterioration there can be a complete loss hmm. right the damage but, is not natural damage is not natural damage is not natural no it is not natural but it may be because of natural cause but deterioration is natural point there is no definition given in law for these wordings we are just interpreting on the basis of the cases decided earlier okay so i give you simple example right there agar apne vegetables agar apne refrigerator mein nahi rakha la ke bahar do din rakh diya what happens To watch full video, join online batch weekdays 8:30 p.m. to 9:30 p.m. Call Tail Institute.